Welcome everybody to a brand new series. This series is going to be all about how you can use MC Edit and how I'm going to use this as tutorials for you guys to learn how to basically become well equipped with the software. Now I know a lot of people have, well a lot of people, I've had a few people ask me about this and uh, it only recently came to my attention that actually recording on the PC doesn't lag as much as I thought it did for my computer anyway. Now, if you hear the, the computer fan in the background, then just ignore that. I've not a lot I can do about that. It is very loud as it is. But I wanted to get straight into the points of this anyway. So, <clears throat> this is MC Edit. This is the main screen that you'll get when you load it up. Now, we'll see you'll get... Your worlds won't be here. This is just because I use them so much that the worlds start to show up. So, these are the most recent ones that I've used. So, basically, you can change all the options on the sides here with whatever you want. These are the sort of the uh, options that I use just to help with what it does. Uh, graphics, again, this is what I use. Target FPS, I could probably raise up, but I choose not to. Again, these are the buffer limits, you can you can adjust yourselves as well. I don't really seem to adjust them because what I find is that I can use it with whatever it's set to anyway. <clears throat> and the controls are obviously WASD to move around with your camera. I don't really use space and shift, I kind of just use my right click to toggle my mouse camera so I can look up and down and move it around, but you're supposed to use space and shift, I don't use it, if you guys get more comfortable using it then by all means do that. Right click as I've said will change your camera style, it's better to show you how these work in this, so to start with you can either create a new world which will give you a blank canvas, it won't be on your Minecraft accounts yet, so you'll have to kind of run through the steps with it through that. You can quick load, which is what you should be doing if you've got pre-existing worlds on your PC Minecraft anyway. You've got, obviously, open a world, but that kind of is, again, it's a longer method. So, quick load, if your world isn't in the options here, you want to quick load it. So, if you go to quick load, and then go and find your world, and you basically will do the exact same as what I'm doing here. So, if you click your world, your world will load. Aha, so... Here is my current world. This may look uh, a little bit familiar if you've been looking at my Twitter recently. But basically this is a beginning of a new CTM map. Now if you guys don't know what a CTM map is, that's complete the monument. And basically it's just a hardcore version of survival Minecraft in custom built areas. Now we're not really interested in this today, this is just the template area that I'm going to be using to show you guys the basic buttons. So as you can see I'm kind of just using WASD to move around. It's dead smooth and stuff, even with frame rates as small as this up here, the frame rate is up here. Even with my small frame rate on this, this render distance, it still, still basically runs fine for me, I don't really mind it. But yeah, as you notice, I occasionally right click, If you, you can have the two options for right click, one has this far zoom on it, which you can highlight blocks far away. The other one is a free roam, which is the one that allows you to move your camera around, because if I'm currently over there, camera is completely fixed, but if I right click and change it, the camera moves. Direct, you've got your uh, compass over here in the corner to tell you which direction you're facing, so if you're looking for a specific corner of the world to fly to, just kind of aim this in the right direction. Obviously north is north, and so on and so on. I tend to start fresh worlds in the bottom corner of the world for some reason, like the bottom left. I don't know why, it's just a habit. But yeah, there are obviously other, you've got the hotbar down here of all the inventory stuff. You can change dimensions if you have different dimensions loaded, so you can go to your end, the nether, the overworld, so if we just stick in the overworld for now. And the other thing is you can change your, your chunk view. Now currently these are the chunks that I've got loaded. So while we're here we might as well explain chunk control. And basically all I'm going to do today is go over the basic buttons. So for this world it's only in an Xbox 360 world. It's the way that I can mod them across to the Xbox and so on and so on. So it restricts me for world size when I'm building maps. Now as you'll notice it changes colour there like it's different biomes. So basically, if you want to get hold of your chunks, you just left click and drag on the chunks you don't want. And then obviously you can, 555 chunks have been selected. So then that's the entire section here. So I can easily just delete the chunks and they're gone. They'll generate, if you next time you load up Minecraft, those chunks will appear again. It just basically allows me to uh, get rid of the stuff. You could do the same here just to prove that it works. Just delete them again. And just let the software run. And they're gone. So we've got obviously deselect and select, so when if you're doing this, you can deselect it and get rid of it. Create creates new chunks that basically just, how do you put it, it generates the land within those chunks, but we won't want to do that. This is a mine shaft, I think, here, that's generated from the PC version of the game. Delete chunks is obviously, as I've shown you, 
prune chunks. Now, pruning is a little bit different. I don't want to do that because I'll lose a little bit of the world. So basically, if I highlighted this and I had excess chunks around the outside of it, if I pruned it, that basically would remove everything on the outside. So basically, it saves the chunks that are inside the border, which is what I'd want, and it removes the rest. So obviously, I don't want to do that because I've just done that to show you the delete tool. Relighting just basically changes the light values in areas. So if you've like made new caves and stuff, you can still go inside of it. So if we go down here and we fly over to our little cave that we've got here, let it render in. So basically, if you wanted to change the light levels in here, if you'd made this area and it was looking a bit bright and it shouldn't be, then you would click on these chunks and you would press this relight tool here. Extracting the chunks, basically, again, it's more like saving your chunk files. It basically, you select the chunk data you want, you can extract it, and then basically it kind of makes individual files that you can pop in different worlds. I don't tend to use extract too much. Uh, I tend to use repopulation a lot, though. Repopulation, the easiest way to put it is, if you've ever found a world that you've been in a long time and there's been new updates for stuff like diorite, granite, and stuff, and you wanted the blocks to appear in your older generation of terrain, like with the new Xbox and consoles update, which came out two weeks ago now, there or thereabouts, basically we came out with some new building blocks like the diorite, the underside, the granite. Basically, if you brought your world into MC Edit here, you could repopulate it, and you would end up with all the blocks again. I did that with um, the SMP server that I've got, which uh, there should be. Uh, the nearest episode to when this will be going out will be episode 13, so go and check that out because uh, it kind of understands a lot of the explanations for anything survival based on the 360 and stuff, and Xbox One. It's all in there. But this is for the MC edit, at least, anyway. Now, today we're not really going to get into too much using any of these down here. I'll kind of spend separate videos on them. I may do these two, because they're not hard. And don't repopulate is basically the opposite of repopulate. So, with that said, these two here are basically just about moving your players in your world. Now, you, if you are... I kind of... We'll take a little step back. Now, if... Like me, if you're wanting to convert from console to PC. Now, PC people, this is completely fine. Your world will just work with completely without this section. You can just ignore what I'm saying. But basically, there are two other tools that I like to use to convert back and forth between the consoles. Sadly, not to this day, there is no way of getting PlayStation maps onto other non-PlayStation maps, if you know what I mean. So, like, different consoles and stuff. But it works, you can get it between the Xbox to the PC and back to Xbox again without crashing. There are two main tools that I use. I use Horizon, and with a lot of people saying that Horizon is buggy and, and makes you have viruses and stuff, it really doesn't. The way Horizon is downloaded is it tries to make you download other options and stuff. You just have to press decline. It's simple as. And then the other tool that I use is a Minecraft converter by Oprise LP. I'll leave both links in the description for MC Edit, Horizon, and the mod tool converter brilliant tool it's worth the money and uh, I definitely recommend you get it if you're moving between the consoles but for the PC people you're already there your world's already on your computer you're completely fine but yeah these basically doesn't do much I can go to the players view the player is here this is this one this, which is my account so if I go to player it just finds the player for me basically I can align the player to the camera which has moved him here it looks like both of the player data values are inside the same chunk anyway so then uh, I can remove players, but I don't want to do that because that'll basically mess with my things. You can reload skins and stuff. Again, move the camera. And then move the spawn point is literally you'll get a little box here, which is the, the spawn chunk for your world. And you get two options. You can either place, place the block, which I don't want to because, again, it's spawning above this little section here. You can go to spawn, which takes you to my chunk. Or you can place a new one and get your chunk changed. So if you don't like the spawn point, you find a really cool place, just take your world into MC Edit and change the spawn point. That's the easiest thing you can do. Again, the select tool works the sort of the same way. We'll work onto the hotbar a little bit here, not too much. But if you wanted to select, say, this water source here. So we'd first of all right click because we can't actually get a block because it's thin air. So if I scroll to about there left clicking again attaches it to it and then basically what you want to do is you want to just cover your entire box like this because then it comes up with the select options for it so you've got deselect which is obviously it will unselect everything select chunks which basically selects the chunks of your region that you're in so if i press this you'll notice the chunks around it have been selected and obviously i don't want to do that so if i just press z control and z all it's done is just undo and that's undone twice but yeah, you, you don't really want to mess around with chunk data unless you want to perfectly find the chunks to change like witch spawning and slime chunks and stuff like that. 
But again, that's a little bit more advanced, and if you wanted to do that, there will be a video later down the line. But you want to just grab it. There we go. So you can delete the blocks, which, uh, again, it's a bit weird. I can show you what it looks like if it, it makes it easier for, for proof. It basically just does this with it, but if I control Z to undo, it's the same as like Microsoft Word and stuff like that. Control Z is undo, control Y is redo, C is copy, V is paste, etc, etc. Delete entities. Now, if you've got entities in your worlds, if I show the entities in this one, hold on, you've got to right click to get these to show up. This is the options that I use for this. So if we turn around, there should be above us up here these red boxes these red boxes are the entity values inside of your world now if you want to clear the entities all you just do is highlight your area oh, deselect that first and just drag it up and then just go delete entities and then the red boxes are gone easy peasy the other option for that is obviously just make your biomes on your world just a little bit different there's one there as well you can just do that delete the entities deleting tile ticks basically up stops block updates in a section so basically, if you've got gravel floating that shouldn't be, sand, water, if you press that button, let's just grab any old area, then basically it stops them from updating until the player manually updates it. Now, other things you can do on this list is analyze. So if I press analyze now, it's just going to come up with a list of blocks of dirt and air, which is in that selection. So that's a 7x7 seven seven selection. There's four blocks of air, four wide, 7x7, seven seven, and then 7x7 seven seven of dirt at the bottom. So basically, you can really kind of highlight anything you want, really, and get the data values on it. Now, if you get monster spawners, on the other hand, you can right-click on them and change the monster spawner data values within them. But without really going into too much detail of any other tools and stuff, they are item frames, those entities there. They are not actual entities. They're Entities count as mobs, chests, item frames, paintings, things along those lines that are not quite... Ladders are, are of them as well. That's a weird effect. But yeah. So we'll next time we're going to go over the brush tool. Because the brush tool is probably the next step for you guys. But this has been a basics introduction to MC Edit. Now I'm going to leave the download links for below. If you're definitely wanting to continue using MC Edit for projects and little bits and bats in your worlds. Then definitely stick around for the rest of the series. But I hope you've all enjoyed. And obviously to save it kind of highlights down here in the bottom corner. Control and S. It's not hard. MC Edit does take a time to save if you make massive changes to it. I recommend uh, saving every once in a while. Don't do too many changes. You'll end up with a big lighting update to do on your world. And MC Edit should, if you do things properly in it without changing any data values, should load on Minecraft absolutely perfectly every time. Just make sure that the version of MC Edit you're using is compatible with the version of Minecraft you want it to work with. I'm currently using version 1.2.5, but the latest version of MC Edit is 1.5 itself. Haven't trusted it, but I know that 1.2.5 is what I like to use. But I hope you've all enjoyed, and I guess I will see you all again in next time when we look over the brush. We might even get on to the clone tool. But until then, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.